Okay, good evening everybody and uh, welcome to this webinar on how to build a career with Python programming. Hope you're all doing good. And before we start, I want to like, you know, get to know the crowd a little bit. There are 30 people over here. How many of you are, uh, have some programming experience or from a computer science background? You've done some course or something like that. And how many of you are like totally new? You can type like EXP if you already have previous experience and new -E new if you have if you are totally new to this Okay, you're coming from a core Java background. Okay, that counts as experience. Okay. So some of you are experienced and some of you are totally new. So I'll be like going through some sessions later on in the thing to like, you know, show how easy Python is to get started and to make a career out of it. So if you are experienced, please be patient during that session because it's all going to be very simple for you. Other than that, I am. Building your own company, do really good, great things. Even if you're not actually trying to do a work or company or something, it's a very good language. There's a lot of things you can do with this. Okay, so let's start with the webinar. Okay, before we start with the webinar, I would like to talk a little bit about the Scholar IT Solutions, which is my company. And Scholar IT Solutions is like an IT solutions provider. It's a group of professionals with high technical and domain expertise. And the team is now efficient enough to serve the entire of US. We have clients all over the US and we are one of the best companies when it comes to implementation training and DevOps and cloud computing. You can follow us on all social media websites, Facebook, Instagram, LinkedIn, we have all things for you to like, you know, get updates about us. And a little bit about me. I'm a freelance consultant and trainer. And I have. And anyone who needs any more guidance apart from this webinar, you, you're free, free. You can feel free to contact me anytime. Okay, now let's start with some introduction to the programming languages. So what are programming languages and why are they called languages? Languages is how you communicate with other people. Some of you might be like uh, you know, from India or even abroad. So language is something which we use to communicate with another person. So that is the same thing what we are doing here. You learn a language to communicate with the computer because computers can only understand, you know, zeros and ones. So you build a language to actually communicate with them. And there are two types of languages, compiled and interpreted languages. Compiled is a language which every time you have to convert all the things which you write into uh, bit code, which is zeros and ones for the, comp uh, the computer to understand directly. And interpreted languages is something like how you use a translator in, the bit in between. Let's just say you're a person who speaks Hindi and there's another person who speaks Telugu. You can't understand each other. So you need some interpreter, some, somebody who knows both languages for you to understand each other. So that is kind of how interpreted languages work. It's kind of like a, there's a translator in the middle. Compiled languages are usually fast because they are direct and inter interpreted languages that like their method and translator, they're very slow. And yeah, coming back to these modern computers and everything, it doesn't really make a difference if you are writing a program in compiled or interpreted languages because the processors with like eight cores and 16 cores these days can run both of them equally good. All languages are created for a different kind of purpose. And that is the reason why we have so many computer languages because we can't use the same language for everything. One language is good for one thing and the other language is good for another thing. And each language has its own advantage, even the languages which have like very low amount of users. And what are high level and what are low level languages? High level languages are something about what we are going to learn. Python, C, C++, Java, everything are like high level languages because they are kind of easy to understand for a human being. They are written in all languages and words which we can understand. 
low level languages are written in assembly code and these are primary languages so anytime you are like writing in a uh, high level language it's eventually translated into a low level language and then fed into the computer to be executed and one of the main things which i want to discuss today is about scripting and coding a lot of people think both of them are the same but in most cases they are not scripting is something which you add to another application like there is some kind of application or some kind of things which is already going on and you're adding your own kind of coding to it and coding itself is like coding from scratch from where it does not depend on any other system for example if there is an application called visual basic uh no what excel or something you write some extra code into that so that's called scripting and we use vb script for that to add some additional functionality which is accessing the low level low level api of the excel basics and everything and coding in the sense like you are uh, doing a entire program from scratch okay going to the next slide and introduction to python python is an interpreted high level general purpose programming language so what does all that mean interpreter i've already explained right python requires an interpreter so anytime you write any code in python it requires a translator in the middle who's going to translate whatever you're saying to something which the computer can understand so this yeah makes it a little bit slower compared to other languages because it's an interpreted language high level of course i said it already high level is in the sense that it's very very easy to understand it's written in human kind of centric language and it does not uh, like you know if you see assembly code it's written in like a b c or something like that which is very hard to understand when you see it unless you're a expert assembly language programmer and general purpose programming language python is a general process uh, purpose programming language mainly because it can be used for anything there are very few things that you cannot do with python for example video games video game speed and everything is like very important so you can't use it so that is one of the examples where you can't use python and pretty much everything else python can uh, do it for you and one of the good things about python is it it comes with an extensive standard library you don't have to download a lot of new things it comes with built in functions which almost uh, take care of all the common tasks and there are also other kind of libraries like let's just say if you want to access by uh, facebook instagram or twitter or any other thing you can access it from python there are specific libraries and there's a lot of other people making interesting libraries as well python is easy to learn very very easy to learn if you compare it to the other languages around there and you will know how easy it is to learn and apart from being a direct interpreted language used for many applications python has been widely adopted as a scripting language for many applications as well now what does that mean so whether you are coming from a business background or if you are coming from a, a scientific research kind of background or anything python is applicable everywhere so you, even if you don't require python to be uh, doing your work anywhere else you can still learn it because you it can you help you automate a lot of tasks and save you a lot of time even on your day to day tasks and it consistently consistently ranks among the most popular languages so what does that mean for you so when a programming language consistently ranks among the popular languages there is a lot of people who are learning and supporting and teaching it so it has a bright future so when you learn a language like this it's going to be useful for the next 15 years or even more and of course it's very easy to learn and to get started with you don't have a that kind of problems which you have with other languages other languages have a lot of strict rules like if you don't obey those rules then yeah the program won't run and it will give you a lot of headache and errors while python doesn't do that that's one of the good things about python even if you make mistakes python won't punish you for it like it won't uh, stop the program from running and that makes it a good thing for everybody a, a person who doesn't want to spend that much time for example a business user who doesn't want to spend a lot of time like you know learning all these languages but still can use all the good stuff in python okay so <clears throat> so how do we write code on a computer so like usual thing how you use uh, the applications you like for example you access a website using a browser and whatever applications you run on top of windows everything runs on something 
and as an end user most people they access computer on a user interface so like you know you press buttons you access the screen you do a lot of stuff and that's how you communicate with the computer but as a programmer we do not access the computer the same way the other people do and there might be a lot of questions when this comes to like you know saying like why do we have to use something like this instead of actually like you know pressing buttons and getting things done for example some kind of uh, preparing a word document or preparing a text document might be very very easy you just have to open notepad or wordpad and type in the text document and then save it but the same process would require a lot of code to be written in python so why do we still use python when we have this other method which is very easy because we are programmers number one and number two whatever you write code you get a lot of control over it how you code when something has to happen when something doesn't need to happen and that makes it sure that you can automate things so once you learn how to code and everything like that you will never be using the computer the same way everybody else uses because you because you can essentially automate a lot of tasks which are repetitive and that is why we have to write a lot of code and the best thing about it is that you write the code only once you don't have to write it every single time you save it and then you can just modify it so write once and then live happily ever after that's how it goes when you are like using python to actually automate all of your tasks so for this little bit of this thing um, so how do you write the code i forgot to say that sorry so a lot of things is like in the olden days when people used to write code they directly asked i mean uh, they en enter and communicate with the com computer using a something called terminal uh, the disk operating system windows or everything like that it still comes with a terminal windows terminal which only the programmers and administrators and everybody else uses if you take high level people they always use the terminal they don't use the user interface and most people just use the keyboard so instead of, we can't like actually you know do everything in the terminal so we use an ide integrated development environment where we write all the code and visual studio code is among the best to do that and i'll show you exactly why okay can everybody see my screen clearly or should i make it bigger Okay, one second. Okay, can everybody see it now? Okay. So this is Visual Studio Code. And if people don't know, it's something which we use to run code directly on the terminal. And we can actually run all the code directly on the terminal, but this is like a quality of life feature. You know, right here, right below here, you can see The terminal on the bottom these things make our coding life a little bit better whatever code you write here is executed in the terminal the way you want and setting up my um, visual studio is quite straightforward you just have to download install files from the internet and then you have to download a python installation once you download the python installation the installation is still straightforward uh, since i've already done all that i'm just saying it so once you do that, you can just open it up and file, create a new file. And when you save it, okay, I'm going to like save it as like Python scripts. And I'm here you can save it in a lot of formats. Here we just go ahead and choose Python, okay. 
okay now that i have this i can ex execute all kinds of uh, scripts using the python interpreter so what you need is visual studio code and the python interpreter python interpreter is down uh, available for download from python.org once you download and install and let me just show you how easy it is to actually run code with Visual Studio Code and Python. So when you want to print something on the screen, that is something which all programmers go through this, this so-called hello world program. All you have to do is like print hello. And to run the program, we just go here, start debugging F5. Yeah, so if you can't see this over here, it run, ran the program on the terminal and I can see the hello text over here. Okay, so that is how we can, uh, <clears throat> one second. Yeah, that's how we can simply run the code on the terminal. It's simple as that. And since if you notice, if you come from any other programming background other than Python, you notice there is no main program here or there is no thing required. And if you come from another program, you might see like there's a semicolon at the, uh, at the end, or there is some kind of braces between two things and everything that is not existent in Python. That's the main difference. If you're coming from any other programming language, there's a lot of things removed here. There is no semicolons, there is no uh, open braces, parentheses, nothing. It's just code. And you might ask, like, how uh, might we separate from one thing from the other? The thing about Python is, like, if there is a space in between, that is parsed very, very accurately. You should never leave any kind of uninten unten uh, unintentional spaces because that is kind of like taken in as the code. So let me just put a little bit of space between print and hello and run the code. It still runs, but this is not how you have to do it. And that's also how I said about Python. Even if you make a mistake, it won't actually punish you for it. And that's how it is. But at the same time, if you are going to use something like an if statement or a function or something, any kind of space will not probably run because it uses the space to find out like which function belongs where and which code that symbols which are annoying to the human eye python is like a human kind of like the, the philosophy of python is like they made it so that human beings can easily like you know understand all these things so let's just start uh, like writing a little bit more code in this thing before we continue on the next one one second okay so in any other programming language, if you're coming from that, you will be declaring all the variables as something. There is one thing about Python. Python is like a loosely typed language. So you don't have to declare any, anything to use it. So what I mean by that is you can just directly start using variables. Like for example, X is equal to five and print. And let me go and run that. Yeah, it prints five. So that I don't have to declare it as int or string or anything like that. So whenever we declare variables, we can just directly use them. And if people are totally new to programming, variables are something which we use to score, I mean, store data. If you are coming, if you have done high school mathematics, we use variables to like, you know, represent data. And when this, when then we substitute them with values, it's pretty much the same here. Python is like highly mathematical. So for example, you might have gone through all these uh, equations where the X, A plus B, A minus B or something like that. It's kind of a similar way here. So what you do is like X is equal to five. That means that you're assigning a value X is equal to five. And then let's just say yeah, like Y is equal to 10. And on print, you X plus Y. And we can go and run that. 
So 10, 5 plus 10 is equal to 15. So that is pretty much Python programming for you. So that is how you uh, use operators and variables. You can use a lot of different operators. And that is like x star y is like multiplication. So if I run that, 50, yeah. And x divided by y is like division. And so on. So these are the basic things which we do in programming. And then we use statements. So what we do, uh, when we want to like, you know, compare two values or when we want to find out if something's, you know, obey some conditions or some rules or something, we use statements in any kind of programming language. So how do we do that? So that is again, simply like if X is greater than Y. So this is where the tricky part is. So when you're typing it in the next line, you have to leave a space a little a little bit of space before you actually type in the value okay sorry about that little bit of syntax error so i have to put this uh, colon in the uh, middle before uh, all the um, statements so there must be a space there is like this empty space over here so this is how the program finds out where the uh, statements are so i have to put it over here print x is greater than y. Okay, now let's run that code. Okay, some kind of error. Okay, I'm sorry about that. There is no parenthesis over here. I'm sorry about that. Okay, now it should run properly. Okay, it's not running. Great. Okay, there seems to be some kind of technical fault with this code. This is supposed to run, but it's not. I'm not sure why. Sorry about that. Okay, let's move, uh, move on to the next topic. And in terms of programming, there are other ways to now, like, you know, store variables. We'll move on to that. So when we store variables, like, uh... all right, okay. <clears throat> so the code was correct and I was wrong. Sorry about that. Okay, so there are other ways to store variables, which is like strings and yes, x is equal to so x is equal to string. So I store a string variable. And uh, since it's dynamically typed, you can change it into anything. So for example, I put it here as X is equal to string, and then I can ac actually go and assign this to a number as well. Python would not say anything like this, but if you're coming from any kind of other programming language, this would cause a lot of trouble because it would say like X is a uh, string type and you're assigning a number type to that and all sorts of errors and this thing would run. Exactly. And when you want to store more than uh, one variable, I mean one value in a variable, you use lists. And for that, you can use it like this.
Okay. So when I print it, let's delete this. in the short amount of time and I would like to talk more about the carriers we can build with Python rather than Python itself and this the point of you know showing this demo is just to make sure that everybody knows that the language is very very simple to get started and learn <clears throat> yeah and there's like a lot more there to Python than what I'm actually showing here this is just you know like for demo purposes Okay, does anybody have any kind of questions? You can feel free to ask them right now. Okay, since everybody here is like kind of bored with printing values, let me show you something else. So what, uh, let me show you something else from the Python standard library. So for that, when we are using some kind of Python standard library, we have to download them. So I'll just show you the request library. Okay, so a request library is simply used as a HTTP library. So when you're like, you know, doing some kind of browsing on the internet, you're, ac that, uh, you're accessing all the values and everything using the browser you type in some website and it gets it and you get those values you input the data you get some uh, nice animations buttons everything so what happens if we use the same thing with python so request is a simple and elegant http library so let me show you request so when you're using some kind of uh, program i mean uh, standard uh, library you just have to import them first. So import requests. Okay, so once you import uh, the standard library, okay, uh, my mistake, standard libraries have to be installed in the first place. And since I've already installed requests, I directly import it into the program. So you'll probably get an error if you try to do that. So let me just tell you about how to install the library. So for that, you need to run the terminal command pip install requests. So pip install, I'm typing it here so people can like, you know, see it. Pip install requests. That's how you have to like add the request library into the Python installation. So once you run that, the installation process goes on and then you can use the request library to request all the web pages yeah uh, once uh, the session is over i'll send you guys all the links to all the programs you have to like you know install and to learn uh, start getting learning on python okay so requests so like for example how do you Okay, one second, hold on, give me a minute. Okay, sorry about that, I'm back. So let me declare a variable called R. So I'm assigning requests dot get so this is the syntax to use the requests. R is a variable we just created, request.get. And in that, I'm gonna type in the entire HTTP thing. HTTP URL, I'm sorry about that. Python.org. 
Okay, so what this does is it sends a request into the internet using the hypertext trans transmission protocol and then gets all the data which is returned by this page, HTTP python.org. So python.org is the website where we have to download Python. So this website, so we are sending this, instead of you know typing this in a browser, we are using this, you are accessing this using code. Okay, so now what, how do we see the result? Print r dot text. Okay. Okay, I'm just making this a little bit bigger. So if you see this, it's returned all in the entire HTML page. Like this. Can everybody see the HTML page returned by this thing? Okay, good. So that's how we kind of use Python to like, you know, do stuff which we normally use a browser or some other application. Python can pretty much replace a human being when it comes to all these things. You can do all tasks like this. Request is just one thing. You can just go and, um, one second. Then you can just access Instagram, access Facebook, access YouTube, everything using Python. And that is just the start. Okay, now let's get back to my presentation. Okay, now coming back to the main thing everybody is waiting for, Python applications in the real world. So what is Python used for? Python is used for a lot of tasks, a lot of applications. And like I said, there is only one kind of application which is mainly missing in this list, which is video games. Apart from that, you can make everything. With my kind of experience, I've uh, encountered a lot of companies, both in India and abroad, and almost everybody they have Python in one way or the other. Either they're using Python as the main programming language, or they're using Python to automate their tasks, or they're just using Python to like, you know, do something or the other, give them reminders, this, that, everything. Because it's such an easy language to pick it up, even for a non-programmer. So one of the main applications of Python in the real world is web applications. Because web applications are basically, um, do not, you know, like are compiled. Like we saw the web page, it had only HTML and the return output is always HTML, regardless of what kind of thing runs in the background. So web applications, one of the main things where Python is used. And I'll talk about a little bit of that in the next coming slides. And desktop application, that's a surprise entry because nobody might have encountered any kind of desktop applications which have been created using Python. Now, why is that? Because Python desktop applications are not widely in the market, but they are widely used behind the market. Almost all companies, they write their own Python programs to actually, you know, do their day-to-day -day automation tasks, Excel or anything like that. Python can pretty much access anything in the computer, uh, from hardware to software to the camera to like, you know, um, any kind of device in the computer, any kind of information in the computer, everything can be accessed using Python and using raw code, which is very easy to learn and implement. So all these companies, they write their own desktop applications. There is a lot of other libraries, Tkinter, uh, PyGUI, all these uh, libraries help us write Python desktop applications. Server applications are another example. Server applications, most people don't encounter on, the, on a daily basis, so they don't know about it, which is run in the background on the servers. Any kind of service you are like, you know, request. Python has a lot of uh, applications in the server side, like HTTP request, like what we did right now. Like when you send some kind of request to the server, it gives you a reply. Two main languages used by Google in that is Python and Go. Data science. Data science and scientific research, both of them are mainly dominated by Python. In this age and times, Python is like the default thing to go for data science and research. Because data science is mostly a business-oriented application. 
where a lot of uh, mathematics and algorithms have to be implemented, which Python excels at doing. There's a library called NumPy, where, where you can always do like, you know, all the mathematical functions which you do it inside the, whatever you do it on the paper, you know, the math, all these advanced uh, calculations, equations, everything can be represented in Python. And because of that, data science, Python and R are two languages which are like very, very dominant. So if you are going for data science, you have to learn Python. Scientific research is another thing. There's another library called Scikit-Learn where it's extensively used in scientific research. And why is it used in scientific research? Because a lot of data is collected from all parts of the world, all different kinds of species, different kinds of diseases, and to process all those data, to conduct all those calculations and everything like that, Python plays a vital role. Almost every single scientist has adopted Python as one of the languages which they use to process data these days. Task automation. Task automation is something which I've seen so much because the way you can, uh, like, instead of, you know, asking somebody to browse the internet, or instead of asking somebody to, like, you know, send an email, you can do that automatically in Python using this code. For example, let's just say I have to send an email to everybody who is like visiting this seminar, which is like about 35 people. So just imagine like you, I could do it the traditional way. Like I could just go it and type every uh, people's like, you know, email ID and put it on the CC thing. And that's a, like, you know, tedious process because as a business user, time is money. You need every bit of time for yourself. You can't sit and like sit emails, send write emails while other people are like, you know, moving forward. So what people do is they automate it. They take a list, for example, a, a comma separated values or any kind of text document with all the emails and they pass the list using Python and automatically send. For example, let's just say that I have to send a different kind of, like there are two kinds of programmers over here. Somebody who's like totally new to everything and somebody who already have experience in other uh, programming languages or they have a computer science background so I have to send like, you know, basics of Python to half of the people and some advanced kind of course materials for the other half. In that case, I can use it. I can actually automatically sort them out based on the replies you guys gave on the chat. have to be doing manually. Everything will be automated. This has so much value in the business field. And cloud computing. These days, nobody actually uses a computer other than people who are you know, technically involved or people who study computer science or business people with their laptops. A normal user generally prefers to buy an expensive uh, cell, cell phone instead of buying an expensive computer. So you have to access the audience everywhere. So cloud computing has become indispensable from the Google, Google Photos, you know, Google search, to every function you access has like cloud in one way or the other. Python is also a go-to language for accessing all the cloud functions. It's the same way how we access the other functions as well. It, it has this specific kind of SDKs and libraries which can be used to access the cloud computing. And one of the booming fields right now, artificial intelligence. Artificial intelligence has like a lot of scope. The same kind of thing Python has been doing, task automation, except that artificial intelligence does it with a little bit more intelligence. Now, what does that mean? So let's just say that I have to manually do something or actually manually instruct something. Artificial intelligence have to be like, uh, of different libraries which uh, Python um, has it the list is actually endless I can list I'm listing out some of the popular options in the next slide and depending on that the companies are hiring for example business companies they are hiring because they want uh, data science data science is indispensable in today's business yeah ML as well artificial intelligence has two main uh, subdivisions that is like machine learning and uh, neural uh, neural networks. 
So machine learning is con uh, collecting vast amounts of data and you know making the computer learn about the data so it can automatically find out all these kind of things like what I'm about to say right now co collect vast amount of data from U YouTube to separate the good videos from the bad videos so that's machine learning which is uh, yeah Python is a go-to language for machine learning as well to train all the ML models so when you make a machine learning model you have to train it so you make the model in um, Python and then you or on a GPU server or anything like that and you train it to actually run all these tests and neural networks what other things companies buy for Python like SQL um, most of the times you need to know a knowledge about how to access API's and as uh, use of uh, other kind of third-party libraries for example cloud like I, uh, what I said about cloud computing say you are going to become a cloud engineer or a cloud architect you need to know the cloud technologies on how to access them cloud technologies can be accessed using any kind of language Python C sharp and Java JavaScript any kind of language but most people prefer Python because you know it's companies prefer Python because it takes very very less time for people to train them in Python and SQL is default if you are working for a company and almost everywhere backends is some kind of SQL or the other so you have to know SQL and if you're like going for a web uh, web uh, web application development you need to know HTML CSS and JavaScript or HTML CSS to and Python if you're going for a framework like Django scripting uh, let me just finish this slide and I'll get to the questions and uh, scripting language for other applications so this is another application so this makes Python even go for other kind of uh, other kind of industries where typically it's not used for example there is an application called Maya which is used to make animation and visual effects which has Python as a scripting language so again task automation you instead of doing repetitive tasks or something you write the script to like you know uh, do it every single time okay now coming back to all your questions I think this would answer a lot uh, Django is a very popular library which is used to make web applications a lot of uh, companies have adopted Django mainly because it's highly secure and very easy to get onto and it comes with um, a lot of built-in functions and flask in a, is another way to like you know code web applications with Python numpy is used for scientific research and PyTorch and tensorflow are used for machine learning and neural networks so neural networks uh, is uh, another thing about artificial intelligence which is highly rule based for example you, you need to like for example use a set of rules to find out which is the bad one which is the good one while machine learning is like collecting vast amount of information to find out using patterns and analysis of all those data to find out which is the good one or which is the bad one come back to you ask me a question about what else you have to learn apart from python so apart from Python, you have to know which industry you're targeting or which industry you want to work in, which might be a perfect fit for you. Yeah, technology is actually vast and a lot of different technologies are like have to be produced because one kind of thing cannot, you know, there are like, like, for example, take cars, there are like small cars, big cars, trucks, SUVs, everything has like, you know, different kind of uh, use or the other. So it is very confusing and if you are like you know having a lot of questions then you can reach out to me like I can actually guide you on which to learn which kind of technology would be a good fit for you. So these are the libraries which are highly used in today's world. I might have missed a few because uh, I've um, not uh, listed out all the libraries which would be impossible for like you know to cover all these in the single slide these are the main things which companies use Django, Flask, NumPy, PyTorch and uh, TensorFlow okay now about the companies which use Python Instagram, Netflix, Quora almost everybody and I can't actually like you know see a place where Python is not used Instagram um, like they don't use just Python alone technology is very complicated you can't just use one 
technology to get things done html css javascript that's one stack html css python or sometimes even html css python and javascript for example netflix everybody knows me netflix you all watch netflix on the internet or netflix movies it's written mostly in python they have actually come out and said like majority of whatever they're written is always in uh, python this is like a free webinar so we're not actually offering any e-certificates and those tech stacks almost everybody they use python in one way or the other facebook google use python extensively spotify is made uh, they made the website using wordpress but they use python heavily in their back end uh, dropbox is another file sharing website which is uh, heavily like using python in the background reddit pinterest is another interesting you um, thing if you are interested in web application development pinterest is a popular platform for you know creating boards and sharing ideas and uh, creative most people in the creative industry are, and people who are like you know into design they know about pinterest pinterest initially used django framework of python but later on when they had to scale it to bigger things they actually uh, made uh, use of uh, flask framework almost all companies they use python so your career in python so when it comes to this slide i would like a lot of interaction from people here does anybody here have have any kind of intentions of starting their own company or they are interested in startups you can say yes okay nobody working oh you're okay okay you're interested in working okay uh, uh so you guys are interested in starting your own company or inter uh, interested in starting up oh yes to start up okay there are a few people okay let me take a few minutes to like you know talk about uh, starting your own companies and uh, startups and what's the difference between starting a company and startups so basic thing the difference is if you're starting an own, your own company you're building your dream company that you're not willing to like you know give it to somebody else like you want to go the distance with that and you're not taking uh, much of an effort or help from other people so why am i bringing this up a lot of entrepreneurs choose python to like uh, as the language of choice mainly because it's easy to learn and they can get a minimum viable product to market in a very very fast way and if you are going for a startup which means most startups actually have the dream of joining some other big companies majority of the startups i come across they all dream of you know getting acquired by some company although some of them they want to go big on their own most of them dream of because startups are very low on resources they can't hire people they can't uh, get the resources they try to push it as hard as possible by themselves and hopefully somebody like you know acquires them or buys them out and then they get the resources to work with starting your company is much more you know difficult compared to the startup uh, thing but still it's much more rewarding like it depends on like what kind of thing you want in life if you're starting your for your own company let's just say you have some financial support or you have the drive to do that you should go for that and for startups you really need to like you know find out what people want in the industry what's missing out any kind of pipeline where you can join in and you can get acquired by that uh, let's just say there's like a lot of people in fintech these days so if you want to start get on the startup thing you need to make sure that some company or the other wants to like you know buy you out that would be the best option to do as a startup and for starting your own company yeah it's a lot of hard work and working for a company working for a company simply the thing is what people expect is like you to have a lot of knowledge beforehand because training and trainers are expensive so when you come with a, a lot of knowledge or any kind of thing which they require out of the box they are most likely to hire you and if you ever have a project which you can showcase that is a huge bonus very few people actually do that I like for example there was one student of mine uh, I used to train him for augmented reality he got a job in a very creative way for example he made when they asked for a resume he didn't give them a resume he instead gave them his phone 
where he made a digital resume with an augmented reality app and the guy was really impressed he didn't even ask questions he hired him because he went for an interview where he wanted to like you know get a job in augmented reality and he made an augmented reality resume map so when you go for a company you need to uh, like you know do a little bit of research about what the company is doing what kind of activities they're doing what kind of skills they want that is quite easy if you can actually go and find out in their website or like in their news feed on their blog what kind of activities they're getting involved in are they doing finance or are they doing you know uh, logistics or anything a little bit of research goes a long way and anytime you can prove that you can do things there's something called proof of concept in business when you go to a company they need to value you and they need to know like you you might have everybody has a degree these days it's become accessible to everybody the number of colleges and everything like that so if you want to work for a company you have to stand out from them you take a resume to them and there's like 10 people or uh, 11 people you need to stand out from them so you need to prove some kind of way like the only best way to do that is make a mini project and show them that you have done something in python or you have done something in any language so that's how you get to start working for a company hands on experience like i said the first thing a company looks for in a modern programmer is they want you to be able to write code immediately they don't have time to like you know train you well they do spend on training but these days companies mostly spend uh, training on other kind of things they expect uh, people to come with certifications or any kind of hands on experience and a portfolio when you have something to show other than your resume that goes like a long distance because uh, most people won't have that they will have a resume they'll have a degree you have something extra they won't definitely notice you and knowledge of the industry knowledge of the industry is very important because you need to know which kind of library you have to learn for python python is common to all industries for example if you're going for a scientific research company you need to know scikit learn and if you're going for a data science company you need to know pandas keras uh, numpy all those uh, numerical analysis libraries so each company you have to learn only the libraries which are related to them if they are business and if they are working in fintech you need to know what kind of libraries are related to that let's just say you're going for a social media company you have to learn the instagram facebook and twitter libraries which are there for facebook i mean uh, which is there for python so how to start your own company there is any if anybody is interested in that i'll talk a little bit about this maybe few minutes there is one kind of booming thing going on right now which is the software as a service and a lot of people say that this is the future because everybody is going to be having some kind of subscription like your netflix subscription or youtube premium subscription almost everybody is going to be having some kind of subscription in the future and to access content these days subscription model has been very popular and most people yeah most people have more than one subscription so software as a service has become very popular so popular that the government is actually offering you startup uh, funding and all those things to start this sas or software as a service if anybody heard of the company called zoho which is based in chennai has become like one of the biggest companies in india and majority of the income comes from abroad and the reason for that is the people abroad have a different mindset a lot of people have this people being in india they have a lot of different kind of mindsets one of the mindset is like it's very hard to make it abroad but in terms of software and digital technologies it's actually easier to get it uh, done in abroad when you are starting a company especially in this age and thing you need a lot of resources you can't compete with the big companies where there is a lot of players and a lot of people like you can't go and compete with instagram or youtube or facebook because there is already a lot of people a lot of people in india and abroad have success when they target a different kind of audience from where the big companies stay away from nobody is accessing that market nobody is serving that market you can easily go and grab that market if you are smart enough to do that and if you are uh, starting a um, one thing about business people is that they don't like to work they don't like to sit and work they like to know make deals talk to people 
and get the business developing. They don't like to sit in the computer and work. So most of these people are highly unlikely to like, you know, sit and work. And that is because like they find like, you know, sitting in computer like a waste of time. So if you take the headache out of their day to day work, they'll pay you money easily. And a lot of people, even Zoho and all those different companies, they made it like big because of this. If you go and use, see the applications of Zoho, it's all basic stuff. And they made it a little bit more comfortable and easier for business users and it goes a long way and they've become one of the biggest companies avoid targeting the mass market like i said unless you have a large financial backing never ever go for the mass market mass market is like, like everybody is going for that all the big companies you can't compete with them you have to go for the niche market niche market is like a small sizable community where it's underserved they don't have applications like there there was this one thing there was this cab service and in this modern age and era that cab service was serving all these people and they had only excel sheets to process everything they didn't have any applications even and there are very few people actually offering applications or kind of you know service for those kind of people when you approach people like that you're an instant hit they love you and they were ready to pay money if you're taking the headache and pain out of their heads foreign market is easier to monetize and no, most people wouldn't agree with me because they think the uh, foreign market is very hard to you know break but it's not the case those people are more likely to pay if in india you say that i'm taking a like a little bit of work away from your head can you pay me like ten dollars per month they'll be like no i'll do the work myself but if you do the same thing for a foreigner they're likely to buy your service because they don't want to waste time in this thing and they'd rather pay ten dollars to you than sit and do the work themselves and as usual, everybody's advice, find a co-founder. When you're working, you're, you're more likely to discuss ideas and you might be strong in one thing. Let's just say you're strong in technology and you might not know the finance part. So you need a, a person who can handle the finance or business kind of things. More, more, the more founders, the better. Most startups who are like, you know, highly successful have at least like, you know, three, four, three to four founders by, uh, doing the job. and a little bit more about startups an idea that can change the world an idea that can be make the world better unique and monetizable getting startup funding is close to impossible these days and if your idea is like you know fits all these three requirements you can get funding else you won't it's simple as that you need to have an idea which can change the world which is very hard an idea can that can make the world better and monetizable. If somebody has already done that before, fund uh, the people who are funding, they will ignore you totally. And it has to be monetizable. Your idea might be really good, but it might not make any money. So in that case, there'll be no funding. So you read all these things carefully. If all these three conditions are met by your idea and startup, you're definitely get to get funded and uh, questions we have time for questions anybody can ask me questions hello is anybody here you can ask me questions. Yeah, you can reach out to me in my LinkedIn page. I'll share it a uh, one second. 